Hoop Genius, How a Desperate Teacher and a Rowdy Gym Class Invented Basketball by John Coy, illustrations by Joe Morse. Taking over a rowdy gym class right before winter vacation is not something James Naismith wants to do at all. The last two teachers of this class quit in frustration. The students, a bunch of energetic young men, are bored with all the regular games and activities. Naismith needs something new, exciting, and fast to keep the class happy, or someone's going to get hurt. Saving this class is going to take a genius. Discover the true story of how Naismith invented basketball in 1891 at a school in Springfield, Massachusetts. In December of 1891, James Naismith, a young teacher, took over a rowdy gym class that had already forced two teachers to quit. He didn't want to, but nobody else would teach that class. The students hated the boring exercises and gymnastics that they'd been doing over and over. So Naismith decided to try something fun. Indoor football. He needed something much less rough. The next day, Naismith suggested indoor soccer. He called a halt. In desperation, he turned to his favorite sport, lacrosse. Nothing was working with this group. Naismith felt like giving up, but couldn't. The boys in the class reminded him of how he'd been at their age, energetic, impatient, and eager for something exciting. He needed a totally new game where, to avoid tackling, no running with the ball was allowed. He remembered playing duck on a rock as a boy. In that game, you knocked an opponent's fist-sized stone off a larger rock by throwing your own. If you missed, you had to retrieve your stone before you were tagged, so accuracy was more valuable than force. He snapped his fingers and said, I got it. How about a game with a goal off the ground that required an arching throw? That night, he stayed up late thinking about the new game. The next morning, December 21st, 1891, Naismith rushed into his office and grabbed a soccer ball. Now he needed a goal. He asked Pop Stebbins, the building superintendent, for a couple of square boxes. He didn't have them, but he had something else, two old peach baskets. Naismith tacked the rules to the gym bulletin board and promised the class that if this new game failed, he would not try any more experiments. Captains chose teams of nine members and Naismith selected two centermen. He tossed the ball up between them and they jumped for it to start the new game. Because the men had never played before, Naismith called many fouls for holding, pushing, and tripping. After two fouls, the player had to sit on the sideline until the next goal occurred. William Chase launched a shot from 25 feet that went in for the first and only basket of the game. When Naismith blew the whistle to end the game, nobody wanted to leave. The next day, the students lined up eagerly for the game. They played hard but avoided fouling because they wanted to stay on the court. When students went home for Christmas vacation, they taught the new game to their friends. Soon people in cities, small towns, and on farms were playing basketball. In 1892, a group of women teachers from a nearby school asked James Naismith if they could play too. I don't see why not, he said and the games were arranged. In one of them, Naismith, as referee, was shocked when he called a foul and one of the women protested as strongly as any man. 
but he remembered that game clearly. One of the women, Maud Sherman, later became his wife. By 1936, basketball was so popular around the world that it became an Olympic sport. James Naismith attended the opening ceremonies, and when each nation dipped his flag to honor him, tears of happiness came to his eyes. And today, millions of people around the world play the game that was invented by James Naismith and that rowdy class. Do you? Author's note, James Naismith, 1861 to 1939, suffered the loss of both his parents to typhoid fever by the time he was nine, and he was raised by his uncle Peter, who was stern and demanding. James struggled in school and dropped out at 15 to work in logging camps, but he returned to school, studied hard, and graduated from McGill University in Montreal. He attended the International YMCA Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts, and accepted a job as teacher upon graduation. The YMCA was quick to recognize basketball's potential, and by 1892, the organization was helping spread the game around the world. Hoop Genius by John Coy, AR quiz number 156779. This is a level 4.6 book that will earn you 0.5 points if you earn a 100 on the quiz. Good luck!